What's happening, y'all? Happy Monday. Yes, they do exist. So I had planned to go live about an hour ago, but um, due to technical difficulties, and um, the only reason I'm bringing this up is that the technical difficulty um, was a headphone jack. Yeah. So my beats beat me down because when I plugged in my beats to my laptop, then it wouldn't pick up my mic, wouldn't pick up my camera. And here we are. The goal of being able to simultaneously go live and interact with my Facebook family and um, record a podcast at the same time. So the only, I mean, I, I, I could technically do it with my crappy Mac camera, um, but I have a, 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 a detached camera instead. Uh, and then, of course, my lovely blue snowball condense, uh, condenser mic, which gives you that nice quality sound uh, for a podcast. So what'll happen is I've, I've, I've told, I've told the story before, to discuss the process before I'll get done with this Facebook live. My team will then extract the audio from it, clean it up, put an intro and outro, um, various things that need to be put into the episode there and then produce an actual podcast episode. Not just a, not just a hat rack friends. So uh, what's happening here? We're going to dive right in. I'm going to get started here with the actual recording in just a minute here, but I wanted to quickly greet uh, everyone that's jumped on here. What's happening, everybody? Tony, Anna, Egley, Egley, what's happening? Uh, Andrew, Egley, I texted you earlier um, along with Ian. Uh, Diego, Sean's in the house. Mark Hefner's in the house. What's up, guys and gals? Thanks so much for joining me. I don't know if you guys had the opportunity or not. Uh, by the way, I just got done drinking my afternoon uh, ketone mix. Brought to you by my friends at Prove It. See right here? Prove It. Oh, wait, this is in front of the light. You can't really see. This one's my favorite. This one was out on um, St. Patrick's Day special. So those of you that have not been following my ketone journey, um, back in November, I, I stepped it up and created leverage on myself and joined um, Equinox. Part of the, or one of their year end specials, fell in love with the gym uh, last year in LA and came back and it was on my to do list to join, stop by for a tour. And um, yeah, that was the end of the story. Along with that, I got home and uh, I looked over my bookshelf and I had a whole box of, of Prove It's Keto Max um, supplement where you can essentially drink ketones and put your body into ketosis within an hour. Well, th the box had been sitting there for a year because I didn't do anything with it nor did I take it seriously, but the, the ketone buzz continued, pun intended. So I hit up my good friend, Rob DeBoer, and uh, he walked me through the park on what, what's happening with the product uh, and the company Prove It. They've done just under $400 million over the past uh, almost four years. Uh, the technology, they have a government patent, et cetera, et cetera, uh, on this product. And like Rob said, just try the product. And I said, okay. So I'll try it for five days and what happened was that my brain fog disappeared. I had long uh, sustained amounts of energy. It literally felt like my body, when your body's in ketosis, um, fats being burned and used as energy. So it felt like that. Um, and I was also in a better mood. Everyone uh, obviously loves other human beings in a good mood, right? And I uh, was just laser focused. So my, my ADD wasn't, you know, look squirrel. Anyhow, this, this episode is not about ketones. We did a, an episode already about it. But anyway, if you want to try out five days of Ketone Max, the light's a little crazy here. This is a really cool colored pink, but the light's turning it like fuchsia. Um, anyway, you want to try five days of these, uh, check out ketonebuzz.com. I'll put a link right here. and Or just send me a message, and I'll send you the details on what you need to do to take advantage of that. Anyhow, who else we got in here? Rockin' and rolling. We've literally got people joining us from all over the world. All right, we're going to get right down to the recording, and I'm going to start it and make it official so that I know that I've been babbling for a couple, two, three minutes. I'm going to leave some dead air, and then we're going to begin. Um, if you have any questions or feedback about what I'm talking about in the topic today, which is Alex Inc., ABC's newest uh, television show about a dude that quit his job uh, and started a podcast. If you have any questions about that, just go ahead and chime in on the comments. I won't be able to answer in real time because I'm going to be uh, focused on actually recording the episode, and I don't want to space hunt it. But leave a comment there. Hit me up on um, on Messenger if you have any questions. Uh, remember that uh, podcasts suck if you don't 
have one. So if you're looking to launch a podcast, uh, we can most definitely help with that. We've had a tremendous amount of success over the past, I'd say, almost 18 months. Now, about 16 months with the launch of the podcast, launchlab.com. So check that out. If you're looking to launch a podcast, looking to launch a show for your brand, you should because your, your company needs to be a media company. It's 2018, people. Get with the program. All right. Let me grab my water here, and uh, then we're going to get recording. All right. <clears throat> here we go. What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Seb Rusk Show. Yep, you guessed it. I'm Seb Rusk for short, Sebastian Rusk, I guess, for long. <laughs> hey, uh, maybe it's your first time listening to the show. Uh, maybe uh, you're a long time listener. Either way, I appreciate you uh, and um, your time because there's a lot of things you could be doing right now. So to carve out, 15 or 20 minutes to listen to me babble about why you should be launching a podcast for your brand. I'm extremely honored by that process. So topic this week, a uh, brand new show on ABC. ABC is just crushing it this year with shows and taking over American Idol and uh, um, all the new shows that have launched on ABC. But one of my favorites has to be Alex Inc. The show launched last uh, Wednesday evening. And the show is based on uh, the podcast Startup uh, from Gimlet Media, a guy named Alex Bloomberg and his partner uh, started this some four years ago. Now, I didn't know anything about uh, the backstory of the show. I simply just set my DVR. I was out of town last week uh, with my daughter for uh, spring break, so I didn't have the opportunity to, um, to, to, to watch it in real time. I guess I probably could have, but I knew that I had DVR'd it. Hashtag welcome to the future. So when I watched it, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great. I thought that um, uh, the the entire storyline made perfect sense. Um, being able to have uh, the dude from Scrubs, Zach Braff, play the part, uh, really, really, he, he was really, really able to dial that character in. And then I'm listening to the Perpetual uh, Traffic uh, podcast. My friend's a digital marketer. Shout out to Molly Pittman. And they had uh, a guest on that um, talked about um, actually um, this, the, uh, it, it talked about his uh, startup uh, podcast called Startup. I think this is how it all came together. I could be, I, you know, I really could be um, spacing out here, um, but it was, it was a long story, a lot of details. Um, but th the bottom line is I was listening to another podcast and it had nothing, no relation to the actual show on ABC and the guest on perpetual traffic was talking about his, um, his startup, um, and being able to, um, uh, create a podcast, uh, startup through the process and how the whole story started to unfold as I'm starting to, um, you know, listen to this. I thought, you know what, let me, let me just, let me just run over to the iTunes store in real time and, uh, and subscribe. Uh, to this podcast uh, right away. Uh, this way, um, I can I can reference it back uh, later on. Now, um, and I'm going to get the correct name for you here. I should have this right in front of you. If you have a podcast and you're taking notes, make sure you have all of your uh, details in front of you. Okay, Jason Swank is the guy's name. The topic was um, how Jason Swank used chatbots to generate two hundred fifty thousand dollars in two months. Now that that title in itself of an episode of podcast of a podcast was appealing enough. I was in the car, had a couple hours to burn. Uh, I listened to the podcast. Jason told his story. He also referenced the startup podcast. I immediately went, looked up the startup podcast and uh, subscribed to it and downloaded the most four most recent episodes. And all it said was Alex Inc., Alex Inc., Alex Inc., Alex Inc. It quickly, um, I quickly realized that what was happening here was that it was telling the story, the backstory of what took place on how this actual show became podcast show became an actual television show so as i um uh, dove into the uh, new podcast which by the way if you're looking for a new part uh, podcast and you love startups uh it's called startup uh in the itunes store that's literally all i pulled up it's startup the podcast startup the podcast and um the first four episodes i've listened to i listened to two and a half so far and they're all narrated by Alex Bloomberg, the, the real Alex Inc. In, in, in real life. And the story starts some four years ago 
when Alex is a uh, news journalist and um, rap, watching how the world is ra- the, the world of media is rapidly starting to adapt to new media. Radio is moving to podcast. Traditional billboards are moving to the Facebook news feed and wherever the online digital mediums are. And he saw the huge value there. Now, he was doing the podcast for free, and the only way to monetize the podcast was to offer, you know, T-shirts and sell them during the podcast, which they did extremely well. They sold the, uh, a T-shirt with some catchphrase on it uh, and made well over like $600,000 the show so the show started to really gain a lot of traction um uh once it got off the ground but the podcast really tells the backstory of alex originally getting the opportunity uh to go out to silicon valley out to la to pitch a billionaire um investor chris saka if you don't know who chris is he fills in on a shark tank every now and then he wears those country western shirts tall um, slender dude with a beard. Anyway, he's like the go-to dude for investing, has been, got on the first round of Twitter and Uber and all kinds of other crazy investments and literally became a billionaire. That's with a B. So when Alex Bloomberg had the opportunity to fly out to LA and actually sit down and pitch Chris Saka, he didn't really know who Chris was. He didn't really have a backstory on Chris. He just knew that the guy was a top investor in Silicon Valley and start in Silicon Valley in startups and in LA. So, um, He flew out there and had a conversation with Chris. And Chris is a super cool guy, super laid back guy, but super, super smart and knowledgeable, specifically within the startup space, specifically with the investment phase, with the pitch phase, with the presentation phase. So Alex shows up all locked and loaded, ready to go with his pitch deck, i.e. a PowerPoint presentation, um, also known as a crutch. If you're going out to pitch people for millions of dollars, you should have that pitch locked down um, with maybe a post-it that you're referencing notes in the palm of your hand that no one else can see. But anyway, he goes out there, and uh, you know most most of these pitches are happening within um, a a conference room or an office, or you know it's LA, it could be you know a coffee shop, and he gets out there, and 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 Chris Saka says, "Come on, man, let's go for a walk." So um, they're outside on a busy street in LA and uh, going for a walk, and he said, "All right, man." Uh, you know, what do you got? Pitch me. And uh, Alex was just full, like a mouthful of marbles. Alex Bloomberg, the, 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 the real Alex Inc. And just fumbled the pitch, fumbled the why. Um, he even said, well, I, you know, I think we're looking for maybe $1.5 million, I think. And as he's pitching Chris, Chris is such a cool guy and he's so experienced and so seasoned. Uh, Chris starts to, to edify Uh, his pitch for him in real time. It starts to correct him, starts to give him constructive criticism. Now, at the same time, he's losing patience because Chris isn't there to waste time, but at the same time has a soft heart for the guy because he's just completely blowing him. And everything you could do in an investor pitch, um, Alex is doing wrong. So it gets towards the end of the conversation. You can hear traffic going by, and they're recording this, which I'm so glad that they did because it turned into content for their show and really helps illustrate the backstory of the show now on ABC. But Chris said, give me a second here. Cause I'm just going to, I'm actually going to pitch your pitch back to you. <laughs> so he gets them back to you. And all of a sudden he's like, listen, dude, here's the deal, man. There's a huge shift happening within media. Um, you know, we've got a huge show with a huge following. I believe we can bring on a few other shows, create content and monetize that content. We're looking for a million and a half bucks. Are you in? And it was really a simple pitch that Chris flipped back on Alex. Alex was full of nerves and didn't know what he was doing. It was essentially just bombing. And when you bomb with an investor the first time around, getting the opportunity to get back in there and pitch him again, it's it's not, especially a guy like Chris Saka. I mean, that guy's the man. Just hello, Shark Tank. Those are, that's street cred enough. And, you know, first rounds of Uber and uh, and Twitter. I think they said on the podcast today, he owns some 14 or 15% of Twitter. Imagine that. Um, But in any event, Completely bombed, and Chris got back to him and said, "Listen, you know, I showed you. I, you know, I gave you some some constructive criticism. I gave you some feedback. Um, I even gave your pitch back to you, letting you know, like this is how the jive should sound. This is how the conversation should be taking place when you're pitching someone for a couple of million dollars. You need to know exactly your why. You need to know, you know, what what is your, what, you know, what's your, you know, what what's your your competitive advantage, um, and, and what's the FOMO." I love that. The fear of missing out. How do you ingrain FOMO into your pitch? Because you can imagine these investors and investors anywhere, seed investors, angel investors, I don't care what you want to call them. They're all getting pitched left and right. 
So what do you got to do? It's like, it's like Facebook or social media content. There's a lot of noise there. You have to figure out a creative way to rise above it. So Chris stands there on the uh, uh, street corner of, in, uh, in LA and says, Let's, look, look, man, I, I appreciate you coming out. Um, I think you got a decent idea, but I want you to go back to New York. I want you to hone in on your pitch and I want you to come back out and pitch my partner. If this guy bites, we can definitely do something. He used to be a head of talent for Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially, Alex got the opportunity to go out there, completely bomb with his investor pitch of trying to nail down a million and a half dollars with one of the top startup Silicon Valley investors on the planet and get to go back, hone his um, his actual pitch, and then be able to go back and, and pitch his partner. Um, and then from there, uh, it would be um, – it, 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 from there, obviously, they would they created an opportunity. The show was able to be launched, and and then um, you know here we are, television show. That's a pretty long winded explanation, but I wanted to walk you through my example of exactly what I was, um, you know, what, where, where my head was at. I was excited about a television show, and then I'm watching a completely different podcast. You see how everything's related especially within the startup and the marketing and the digital world, listening to Digital Marketers Perpetual Traffic, which is a phenomenal podcast. If you're a marketer, business owner, you run marketing, you must subscribe to that. Uh, my good friend Molly Pittman is one of the hosts for it. So be sure to um, check them out and download it. But then I learned about Justin Swank, just, uh, Jason Swank rather. Jason uh, helped me learn about the startup podcast and I download the startup podcast. Next thing I know, I'm getting the backstory on what is now my favorite show. I just think that's a genius idea. You know, there's a lot of people that take risks with startups. There's a lot of people, especially this day and age, because there's never been a better time to be able to uh, start a business than right now. And I think that's why so many people are doing it. And it's so socially acceptable at the same time to be able to maintain a nine to five job while simultaneously being able to, um, uh, create your personal brand on the side, your five to two, uh, you know five to one a.m. shift uh, after your day job and on the weekends. That's the trick is being you know, uh, being able to master that balance because it's so socially acceptable. I think ten years ago, if you had a job and you told your boss that you had a blog or you were shooting videos about your um, side gig or your blog, even though it had nothing to do with your day job, that would be a problem. That's no longer an issue now, right? So. I, I watched the show and what 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 what's not illustrated as much, of course, they show the emotional dynamic of uh, Alex being a 30 something uh, married family guy, two young kids at home, uh, a working wife. Uh, they, they show the what do you mean you're going to quit your job and start a podcast company like what we have a great job and a 401k and savings. Like it shows a little bit about that. But when you go to the startup podcast and you listen to Alex Bloomberg really illustrate how the story unfolded, because what Alex did was he documented this entire process from the second he started thinking about it to the time that he, he, uh, told his wife about it to the time they actually agreed to go and do it to the time that he flew to LA and, and pitched Chris Saka to the time that he was approached by a partner and decided that he actually needed a business partner. He couldn't go at this thing alone and the negotiation back and forth from his business partner. He wanted to give him 10% initially uh, his business partner wanted 45%. Um, they finally agreed on 60, 40, um, as I listen to the to the startup podcast, it really tells the backstory. But the negotiation that went into both of the potential partner and Alex, they both recorded the conversation of them negotiating, but then they also agreed to record the conversations that they would have later on that evening when they would go home and talk to their wives um, about what the conversation was about, get their feedback on what they should do. So I thought it, I think it's really uh, neat that you can see both perspectives of. Uh, you know, Hollywood's version of the story of Alex Inc. And then the real true grit of what went down. Now, Chris Saka is actually in the first episode. So he shows, um, uh, they, they do show him going in some fancy penthouse office in New York City and pissing, uh, pitching Chris uh, and, and, and Chris actually uh, being somewhat annoyed. And he's like, listen, dude, the pitch is falling apart. This isn't working right now. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pretend that I just called an Uber and I've got, You've got two minutes before the Uber gets here to pitch me. Go. So that actual line did happen on the street 
corner in LA uh, when they went for a walk for him to initially pitch Chris in LA. Um, but um, so it's cool that it made the show. So the contrast on both sides, I just think this is phenomenal and it's a great segue into what my message is constantly, which is right here. Podcasts suck. If you don't have one. And for those of you listening to the podcast, then I, I was pointing at my shirt. We're live on Facebook in addition to. And by the way, if you're listening to the podcast right now, you can head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash social buzz TV. Go to the playlist under the Seb Rush show. Uh, the archive of our Facebook live video is there. So if you want to be able to see my smiling face and the podcast sucks, if you don't have one t-shirt, then uh, head on over there. Uh, for those of you on Facebook, if you ever want to reference this video later on, uh, go right ahead. So uh, if you haven't done so already, set your DVRs, ABC, uh, Wednesday night um, at 8 p.m., I think. That's like the most prime time slot ever. The ratings have come back um, uh, awesome. Uh, let me double check that. I'm pretty sure it's 8 p.m. But anyway, check your DVR. Just search uh, Alex Inc. On most DVRs, you'll see that uh, it'll pop up. You'll really enjoy the show. You don't have much catching up to do because the uh, first episode was just last week. So anyhow, um, I'll leave you with this episode just diving just, just, just for a couple seconds because the goal of these episodes and the reason I even do this show is to be able to shift your mindset from, from, from where you are to where you need to be pertaining to launching a podcast for your brand. Let's back up. It's 2018, becoming a media company for your brand that's never been easier. Sebastian, what do you mean become a media company for my brand? I mean that if you start a Facebook live show and you turn it into a podcast or you start a podcast or you start a YouTube live show and you're creating content, you're running ads on that content, you're building a community around that content, my friend, you are, in fact, a media company as a brand. You see, there's been a huge shift. We no longer have to go to the major networks and beg for the best rate card. We create our own rate card. And speaking of rate cards, if you're Joe the Insurance Guy, and you just started to start, decide to start the show Joe the Insurance Guy podcast, and you build a huge community around it and a following and people that are engaged and interested in your content, which by the way, they, they are, then you're starting to attract sponsors and advertisers. And then we figured it out, friends. We've been able to monetize our content. So I'm Joe, the insurance guy who generates revenue and builds my business through insurance policies but we also generate additional advertising and sponsor revenue because we have a Facebook live show. We have a, we have a, uh, a video series where we interview people in our local town and people that have uh, experienced and testimonials, et cetera. And we create content around that. And because of that brands see the value of being able to have exposure through Joe, the insurance guys podcast. I, I, I really need this to land for you. If you are a boring, mundane, local, small business, and when I say boring, I mean, okay, maybe you're a, you know, you're a litigation attorney. I mean, that's not that exciting, but there's somebody out there that wants to consume your content, so that is exciting, right? So my point is that if you don't know how you should get into this whole social media and digital game, just get in the game. I had this conversation with my good friend Grant Wise um, on his podcast on Friday. And you know the best way to get started, he works with real estate agents and helps them out with their get their uh, marketing dialed in and their branding dialed in. Dialed in. And him and I, we 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 came to the to the same conclusion that the answer is the best way to get started is just to open up open up your phone, click live or or open up the audio recorder and hit record and just start talking. A lot of you have a lot of com commutes on a daily basis in the car. So um, there's plenty of time and you have Bluetooth or you can hook up a little lapel mic uh, that goes right into your smartphone and you're just driving and talking. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not shooting videos while you're driving, but you're on the phone anyway, talking. What's the difference? You might as well talk and record something. Or maybe you just bust out your phone, pull up Facebook on your business page or your personal page and go live, create a topic. What's your biggest problem that you're experiencing this week with your business? Who's the biggest pain in the ass client you're dealing with right now? Don't name them and call them out. Use the scenario and extract the scenario that's taking place to be able to have a topic of what you want to discuss. And listen, 
I'm on a rant right now and I'm on a total good one because I'm fired up about this brand new show and that the fact that you talk about traditional media meeting new media. Oh, by the way, the show got picked up by ABC because they went to them and pitched them and said, we love this story. We love the podcast, but we want to create the entire story into a show on ABC and we're going to pay you to do that. And we're going to bring in top actors and we're going to really tell the story the way that it's going to appeal to the masses. So some dude that started a podcast got a major network television deal. Are you picking up what I'm putting down right now? I am fired up about this. Why? Because I launched my brand some eight years ago and set out after I read my boy Gary V's book, Crush It. If you haven't read that, let's just, I mean, that's his, that's his first of fifth, five books. If you haven't read it yet, you need to because it's a blueprint. And I set out eight years ago to create content and tell stories and create buzz so that a major network or Ryan Seacrest, preferably, because he just makes all kinds of moves and he's successful and there's no drama really around the brand, um, to see my content and go, listen, we can do something with this or we want to tell a story based on what you're doing. I firmly believe that my show on uh, YouTube and Facebook, Foodie Buzz, where I review local restaurants, can and will, in fact, get picked up by the, by the Food Network. Why? Because they're begging for content. And let's just be frank, friends. Honey Boo Boo made it, okay? There's room for my podcast suck shirt, uh, most definitely my bow tie. So I get fired up and excited about this, and I want to share my excitement about this with you because it's my job, it's my responsibility, it's my duty to help shift your mindset and help you understand what you don't know that you don't know about this world of digital, this world of content, this world of storytelling. Everyone's got a story to tell. Everyone's on a journey. Everyone's brand has a story. Everyone's brand has a journey. Everyone's brand has testimonials and what people have said about you and what your product's about and top frequently asked questions. Well, I don't know where to start, Sebastian. I know you just need to start. The first episode is just about what your show is going to be about. Go to the podcastlaunchlab.com. I give you a free training. I give you a free ebook, give you everything that we do at the Podcast Launch Lab to launch podcasts for brands. Spend a couple hours, go through the 22-minute training, message me if you have any questions, and go record your first episode. What happens when you record your first episode? You're telling the story of what's to come. Episode one, I'm so excited. It's my brand new show because I watched the Seb Rush show the other day. He talked about my new favorite show, Alex Inc. on ABC. I got fired up. I'm an insurance agent. I've got the ability. I've got the personality. Even if I don't have the personality, I'll create the personality to start my own show because I see that this is first mover's advantage. Do you realize that all of this technology has only been around for like, 14 years, <laughs> and we're just getting started. Podcast technology is some, I think, 13 or 14 years old, just now gaining momentum and popularity. It blows my mind. So if you've got any questions about launching a podcast, use me as a resource. My email address is srusk at socialbuzztv.com. That's srusk at socialbuzztv.com. TV.com. Don't be a jerk and add me to your list, please. I just had a, uh, I just did a training for my BNI chapter last week about uh, compl uh, opt in compliant networking, which means you don't walk up to someone and just shove your business card in their face without even introducing yourself. So, Alex Inc. Uh, happens uh, Wednesday night on ABC. I think it's 8 p.m., maybe 8 30, maybe 9 o'clock. I don't have the specific show. Wait, I do have it right here. Um, Oh, I'll be in the show notes. And uh, 8.30 p.m. There you go. Wednesday, this Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. on ABC. Uh, yeah, and quick tip. If you do have a podcast or you're starting a podcast and you want to understand, you know, just a couple tips you can take from it in addition to what I've already been talking about, make sure you've got all your show notes in front of you. I did not have my show notes in front of me because I was so frustrated um, that, that my headphones were plugged in and my mic wasn't being picked up um, by Facebook Live. So anyway. Sometimes it's just the simple things. Two millimeter adjustments. Well, that does it for another episode of the Seb Rush Show. I'm Sebastian Rusk signing off from our studio here in beautiful Miami, and it is beautiful. We'll talk to you next time. All right. That's a wrap. 
All right, Facebook, I'm going to go respond back to all your uh, comments right now. I'm going to stop recording so that I can uh, get this audio over to my team and uh, get rock and roll. And thank you so much for your attentiveness, for your uh, commenting, for you chiming in. For I'm going to get back to all of you right now. If you've got any questions about launching a podcast for your brand, Listen, if you're if you if you're looking for the, the the right time to launch a podcast, there's never going to be a right time ever. Do you understand? The time is now, right now. I want you to do one thing when 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 I end this. I want you to think about how many of your comp, how, how many people within your uh, sphere of competition are, are 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 launching a Facebook live show, are launching a YouTube video strategy. Or launching a podcast, or doing a strategy like this, where it's a Facebook Live. Look at your look at your competition. Is anyone doing it? Because if they're not, ding, 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 ding. Great indication. First mover's advantage. So uh, even if they are doing it, who cares? There's plenty of room. There's plenty to go around. But the time is now to get started. If you have any questions, hit me up. S Rusk at socialbuzztv.com. Peace, chicken grease, and bell bottoms. We'll see you next time.